Hi there Cadillac owners, today on your 2019 Cadillac XT4, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Draw Tights Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver. The majority of the hitch is going to be hidden behind the fascia here, but the receiver here will be visible when you have the panel removed. This perimeter that you see here is where a panel uh, for your fascia here um, is removable. It's designed right from the factory to be removable. It's got a couple of twist pins here on the bottom that you can pop off so you can access your hitch. And we'll show you that here in a minute what it looks like when it's completely hidden. But uh, we figured we'd give you an opportunity here to see what your hitch will look like and how accessible it is to use. Now it is a class three, two inch by two inch receiver. So it's gonna be great for all of your towing needs. You'll secure your accessories to your hitch using a five eighths inch hitch pin and clip. We've got plenty available here at E-Trailer, but one does not come included with the hitch. And I'd recommend getting locking ones so you can protect your investments. On bottom, we have hoop style safety chain loops with a very large opening that should accommodate just about every shape, size, and style of safety chain. Our small chain has no problem, and the big boy here also goes on and off with ease. And to the left of our receiver, draw tight has included a welded on bracket for mounting your electrical connector, which is real nice because it, Everything can stay hidden and secure here behind that panel, including your wiring, and you can get four or seven pole options here at E-Trailer depending on your needs. This hitch features a 675 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of our receiver. And that should be enough for a four bike platform rack fully loaded up with four bikes and enough for the largest cargo carrier available here at E-Trailer fully loaded up to the max. Now you do want to keep in mind that tongue weight is going to include anything inserted into the receiver. So for example, a cargo carrier, the weight of that carrier, plus anything that you put on that carrier. It also offers a 4,500 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that you can pull behind it. And with 4,500 pounds, you can pull quite a few things with this. Um, small pop-up camper should be no problem. A lot of John boats and some of the slightly uh, larger boats should be also available for towing with this. Jet skis. So you do have a lot of opportunities with it. Now, as always, I recommend though that you verify in your vehicle's owner's manual and ensure you don't exceed any of its towing capacities. And now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, we're right at about five and a half inches. And this is important when determining if your accessories can be inserted into the receiver without contacting the bumper, and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, we're right at about 17 and a half inches. And this is important when determining if you need a drop, a rise, or a raise shank on your accessories. Now that we've covered some of the features of our hitch, why don't you follow along with me in the shop and we'll show you how to get it installed. This is a little bit more involved than a typical hitch that goes underneath. We will have to remove the fascia on this one, so this is something I would probably recommend for a weekend. It is something you could do after work, but I would expect you're probably going to take two to three hours to install this. Uh, so why not give yourself a Saturday afternoon to get it done, with, maybe with a buddy as well, because it's good to have an extra set of hands when pulling the back here off. So let's get in there and get it done. We'll begin our installation here at the back of the vehicle. We're gonna remove both of the trim pieces that you see here. So go ahead and open up your lift gate and next to your tail light, they're really long strips. We'll start here at the bottom. You should be able to get your fingers underneath and we wanna kinda of pull up and outward at the same time to pop the clips loose. There we go. And we're just gonna work our way up, popping it out as we go. You might have to peel it out a little bit underneath the light here because the lip kinda of hangs on there sometimes and we'll just set that aside. We're gonna remove the other side the same way. And once we get both of those pieces removed, we're gonna also remove the fasteners located here at the bottom corner. We'll use a T20 Torx to remove these. We're now on the passenger side wheel well. We're gonna be removing this trim and peeling back the inner fender liner here. We're also gonna be taking the mud flap off if you have it. There are three fasteners here on the inside we're gonna remove there a couple down there in the mud flap area. There's also one underneath for the mud flap that we're also gonna take off just so we can get the full mud flap out of the way. We'll use a T15 Torx to remove these fasteners. And then our one on bottom is located here, just on the inner edge. We're gonna zip this out with a T15 as well. And once we do, our mud flap will come down and we'll just set that off to the side. Next, we need to pop the trim piece out here so we can get to the fastener that's located behind it. We're gonna use a plastic trim panel tool to, to pop it out of there. So we're gonna get behind it here a little bit and just kind of work our way outward. As I'm prying outward here, 
I'm taking a peek on the inside because you can see where the clips are and you want to keep your tool as close to the clip as you can so that way it pries out of there. And you may even want to switch over to a, a prong side like that so you can get on each side of the clip. There we go. We're going to repeat this, working our way up. And we just need to do that until we're past the seam here because that's where we're going to be removing this part of the fascia. That's all going to stay. I also like to take a, like a napkin or a rag, just kind of fold that up because now that we've got this popped out, we don't want it to scratch our pieces up. We can just kind of stuff this rag in behind it here. And that just kind of holds it out just enough to give us a nice gap to work with. We'll now remove the fastener that's located behind here with the seven millimeter socket. And we don't want to put too much outward pressure on this. So if your tool is starting to hit it, you can usually just go back in there with your hand or you can take your socket off of your tool if you can't spin it by hand and just use the socket to finish it the rest of the way out. Cause uh, if you pull too far outward, you will damage your trim piece here. Once we get the fastener removed from this side, we're gonna repeat the same procedures over on the other side to get this popped off and get our liner peeled back as well. We're now underneath and we're gonna remove the panel that's located here. There's actually just a couple of twist tabs here at the bottom, cause this is gonna be a, uh, the typical cover you would remove to hide your hitch and your wiring and stuff behind it. And then you remove it when you wanna use it and you can pop it back up to hide it. So we're gonna just twist both of these. That'll pop down and then just kind of work it out. These are just little clips up here at the top. There we go, just kind of rock it on out of there. We'll then set that aside. And at this point, it looks like we have a fastener here and here underneath the panel that we're gonna to need to remove. We'll use our T15 Torx to remove these. So we're at the point now that we can start to remove our fascia. We're gonna start here on the side by peeling it back up to the tail light here. I do recommend having an extra set of hands so you have somebody on the other side doing the same thing so you can hold this because uh, this is a fairly difficult fascia to remove compared to some. It's popped out up to the tail light. And once we get up to this point, this is where we're gonna stop. And we're actually gonna grab ourselves an extra set of hands at this point to uh, help us pull this thing away from here. We're just gonna continue working our way around our light. You might need to grab it at the bottom a bit and sometimes on the other side to be able to get it to release here underneath the light because it is fairly stiff there. Just kind of work it back and forth little by little and we can get it to work its way off of it. There we go. Once we get it removed there, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and we'll check for any electrical connectors before we go to remove it. So after we pulled it away, we have a connector here and there's one on the other side in the same location push the lock tab back out of the way, and then you can disconnect it. We also see here that there's this uh, little clip. Go ahead and pull it out of that clip as well. So that way you can pull your fascia all the way away. Sometimes you gotta kinda grab both pieces because they get real stiff from the dirt and debris in there. Once we get it off, we'll just set it aside where it won't get damaged. So we're gonna be taking off the bumper beam that you see here, but the exhaust is also supported by similar fasteners. So we're gonna put a strap in place so that way our exhaust can't drop down too low to where it's gonna damage itself. We're just gonna hook this on the suspension. So you get your coil spring there, you hook it to the coil spring on the other side and just cinch that up. And then we can control then how much we want to lower it down if we even need to really lower it anymore. But we do have fasteners in the way. So next we're gonna be removing the fasteners here uh, to get this piece off because our hitch is going to go in that location. I think we're going to start with our exhaust here just to get those out of the way and then we can adjust our strap as necessary to lower this down. So we're going to remove these lower fasteners here. We'll use the T fit. We're going to use a regular 15 millimeter socket to do so. Now once you take out both of those fasteners, there is a small hook right here at the bottom, these little blue hooks here that are holding your exhaust up there. So that's fine, just let it rest on that point. We'll head over to the other side, remove them. And then we can control uh, kind of resting it down a little further. All right, we'll get that last fastener out of there. And now I'm gonna loosen my strap just a little bit 
just to give us enough slack there to lower it down some. And then on each side, we're just gonna lift up slightly, pull towards the rear just a little bit to make it clear those hooks. And then we can actually push it back in underneath those hooks and that'll actually keep it with a little bit of downward pressure underneath of where we're gonna be working. And then our strap will support it from falling down too far. So now we can remove our top fasteners here. And when I remove the top fasteners, I always take the top outer one or whichever one's easiest to access. After I zip it off of there, I'm gonna thread it on there just a couple of turns. This way when I'm removing the rest of the fasteners, especially when I'm over there on the other side, I know this side can't fall off of me while I'm working. When you take out your last fastener, make sure you're supporting it. We can then grab it in the middle, remove our safety fastener we had put on there a couple of turns, and slide our beam away. We can now take our hitch and slide it into position. It should slide over the studs where we had just removed our bumper beam. Once we slide that on, you can grab your bumper beam. I've just had that nearby. We're also going to slide that back in position. And after you've got that slit on there, just grab one of your nuts, put one in the outer, or again, easiest to, to reach, just thread those on, one on each side, that way it'll hold itself up there, and we can now easily reinstall our fasteners. Now we can put our exhaust back into position, so you're just gonna, might have to slide that guy out again a little bit, and then push it back in, and you can get your fasteners started. Make sure you get them both started by hand, because you don't wanna get all this, this far doing this, and then, uh, cross that or bolt now. Now the other side one here, you might have to lift up on the hitch and your bumper beam just a little bit just to get it to line up. There we go. I just had to give it a little bit of upward pressure because it was kind of blocking the hole a little bit. Once you get it started though in there by hand, you can let it back down and we can zip it down with our, our tools now. We're going to grab our 15 millimeter again and run them all down. Then we'll grab our torque wrench so we can torque them. And we're just gonna torque these to the specifications outlined in our instructions. Once we've torqued all of our fasteners, we'll reinstall our fascia in reverse order of how we removed it. So we've got all of our hardware torqued down. We're just gonna reinstall our fascia in reverse order of how we removed it. And that completes our installation of DrawTight's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2019 Cadillac X-T4.